this is H Galleon here talking about our River City Girls on the PC. It's gonna be my first set of review videos. I'm just basically testing the water out to see how things go. Basically, I just want to give everybody the honest opinion of what I think of this game. Well, I did try to really play and enjoy this game. There were a lot of nuances that really turned me away. Um, overall, it was a decent experience, but nothing great. I'm going to get into detail as far as every little thing that bothered me and what I actually liked, etc. So, first of all, we're going to start off with the visuals. Um, graphics presentation is amazing on this game. Uh, I can not fault WayForward for their incredible work as far as um, the graphics, sprite work, uh, the detailed animation cutscenes, the artwork are all fantastically done. Um, lots of visual appeal, uh, charming looking characters, uh, nice effects, tons of in-between frames for uh, the animations. It's all there as far as the WaveForward standard, it's top notch. I really do enjoy their visual presentation on their games. Um, they seem to always be pretty solid on that. Uh, I don't usually have an issue. So uh, I can't really fault anything in that department. Um, as far as the uh, visual aesthetic, I do like the visual upgrade compared to the previous games. Uh, I got sick and tired of seeing the same old graphics from the previous uh, River City games. Uh, it was kind of a nice change of pace to uh, throw a new coat of paint, per se. So I'm glad they did change that. That, that. I think that was a necessary change that needed to occur because it was just getting stale after a point. So hopefully this brings some new life into the franchise. I wouldn't mind seeing this graphics uh, style be used for future games. So just kind of a repl replacement engine and build on it and make it even better. Um, the... Next thing I'm going to be talking about is the sound. Sound and music. Uh, voice acting is incredible. Uh, a lot of familiar voices in there. Uh, Matthew Mercer. Um, I'm sorry, Patrick States. Uh, and Christina V. Are two well-known voice actresses and uh, voice actors in this game. Uh, there is a lot of good talent here. Um, Top-notch voice acting. I didn't have any problem with the voices. They all seem perfectly they seem like a perfect fit for every character um, really enjoyable really um, energetic uh, lots of personality so definitely the character interactions and the story part of it uh, were brought to life with these with all these voices so I really do appreciate that they went the extra mile to do that and then the music department I would say it's kind of it's good. I mean, I do enjoy the music. However, it seems, I don't know, out of place. I got the feeling when I was listening to it, like it felt like Capcom SNK2 soundtrack. While it is a good soundtrack, some of the tracks were just like, wait, what? <laughs> I didn't really uh, get the reason why some of those tracks were in there. Uh, so I was kind of confused, but at the same time, it didn't, I don't think it ruined the experience. It just made me kind of just like, okay, interesting choice, but the music itself is actually a really good listen. So it's different. I will say that. So kind of a mixed bag, but overall is really good. So, um, now as far as the next thing goes, the, where we're going to get into more of the negative aspects of the game, and this is probably where I'm going to hammer it. The hardest, and I know a lot of people are not going to agree with me on this, but hear me out. Um, first of all, is the controls and the gameplay. While the controls themselves are fairly responsive, like moves come out when they're supposed to. I'm not calling anything out on that. It's pretty standard fare. But the way the combat system works in this game, it feels really clunky. It feels really sluggish. Um, moves have a lot of uh, delay and a lot of recovery frames. So um, I feel that 
the pacing of the game gets kind of uh, ruined because how everything kind of just leaves you open. I mean, even a jab is really slow. I was testing it, just different moves, and I was like, God, there's so many slow moves in this game. And some moves are ultimately just risky or useless to use, particularly the backhand. Um, I never used it. I, I thought it was a completely pointless move because of how slow it was, and it really doesn't do anything to take care of enemies surrounding you. So I feel like I just backhand them, and all of a sudden I get popped in the front of the face. So it did nothing for me. Uh, the parry mechanic, while I do love that there is a parry mechanic, the parry mechanic itself, I feel, is just sparingly used. It's kind of just there. You don't really utilize it to the full potential. While I do appreciate it is there, I just feel that there's no need for it. It really doesn't add anything to the game to really make you want to go, Oh, I need to use this. Like, I guess I'll use it once in a blue moon. But, uh, yeah, the overall combat just, it feels like they didn't spend enough time on it. The polish on it isn't there. Um, the majority of the work seemed to go into the voices, and the voice acting, the, the music, and the graphics. The gameplay, I felt, took a back seat. Um, not only with the controls, uh, the actual game itself has a lot of problems, a lot of glaring issues. Uh, for one, the game is repetitive as hell. You constantly go through the areas fighting the same enemies over and over again. Um, with obviously a change of scenery, but there's only like, I think seven or eight different enemy models. And you really just keep fighting those same enemy models over and over, and once in a while you get locked into a, a cutscene where you're stuck in the transition, um, transition into a cutscene where you're forced to fight. So you basically have to keep fighting until everything's cleared. I really felt that was just there as a kind of a time sink. It really didn't serve any purpose. Um, the fighting itself to level that whole particular system feels pointless. Like, really, leveling in the game helps you so such an insignificant amount that I really felt there was no really need to do it. So I could, you could literally just run by everything and not fight anything and only have to fight the force fights when you need to and beat the game rather quickly. The only really reason to fight enemies is just to build money to buy moves and buy uh, accessories. Um, that's another thing that, that bothered me was the item shop. There's a lot of item stores that have health recovery that you can buy and I noticed there was um, they, all the item descriptions are hidden. But when you buy an item, you don't have no idea what it does, which I think that's really freaking stupid. Um, there's no reason to make it all cryptic, especially when the prices are such a different amount, such a varying different amount between each other. Um, some of the items are like, oh, you know, 15 bucks, and then you'll get an item that's 20 bucks, and they both do the exact same thing. So why in God's green earth would I even pick the fifteen, uh, the twenty dollar item when I can just pick the fifteen dollar item that does the same thing? So I really felt that they just needed to make the items actually differ from each other in a in a good way. So it's like I can understand being more expensive, you get more health, makes sense. But it didn't do that, and the fact that they made them hidden, so you have to buy each item to figure out what each item does. So. I don't get the reasoning for that. It just feels kind of thrown in there without any thought. So I think that whole item system needs to be redone. Um, also, again, with the fighting itself, it gets tedious as hell because you're constantly doing the same thing over and over again. So you're there's no real breakup in the monotony other than the bosses. While... Some of the bosses are very unique, uh, particularly uh, Noise was the hands down the most interesting boss. She had the most uh, varying uh, playstyle, so which I thought was kind of neat. And then um, there were other. Another boss that was interesting was the um, I think it was the I forget her name. The black girl, the girl with the the flying girl with the dress. I forget her name, but the Zomi or what? I forget her name. So I can't I can't remember the name. So forgive me. But um, 
She she was actually you fought her like a traditional, uh, like a like a Mega Man stage. It's two D side scroll. There was no three D axis. So, I mean, uh, there was no uh, Z axis, no depth. Uh, so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So other than that, um, the bosses are pretty straightforward, standard fare. Um, there's a lot of uh, attacks I felt like from the enemies where they just feel cheap just because and that's really the only thing that makes the game really hard. It just enemies can just interrupt you when they want to and a lot of iframes on their moves. So you spend a lot of time just you know waiting to for them to attack so you can counter. So um I felt uh, the enemy I could have been a little bit better. It's not the worst, but it's not the greatest. But the biggest problem was just the amount of fighting you do and just nothing to vary it up. There's some side quests, which are minimal and far between. Uh, but it, they needed some mini-games, like from the other River City games, had a lot of mini-games. I thought that would have been a nice thing to do, like a race, or like throw a ball around, or something. Beat X amount of enemies with an X timer. I think that would have been a nice change of pace. Just to break away from the monotony of the gameplay. So it doesn't feel so tedious. Um, as far as like the gameplay goes, like I said, it's decent. Um, I think this is where the game really starts to fall down. Uh, and then we get into the final category is the fun factor replayability. While the f game is fun to play in the sense of for the story and the characters, I did enjoy that a lot. So... It's one of those things that's like, oh, okay, the ride at least, the ride at least has some high points. It's just the ride itself, which is the gameplay, I think, is what brings down the whole game because it feels so unpolished and kind of rushed. Um, the lack of um, replayability. The game is super short. I beat the game in about um, six, six hours, six seven hours. So not that long. Um, and that was me playing it on hard mode. But as far as uh, other things to do, there's New Game Plus, which you beat unlocks after you beat it. Um, you get uh, you unlock the um, the two boyfriends, Ricky and Cunio, after you beat the game. And then if you collect all the statues, I think there are 25 of them, and you beat the game, you unlock um, the final mystery boss, which is the, against Hasabe and the other girl, Maki, I believe. The two girls, your rivals, they're the final boss. Um, but other than that, that's really it. Like, there's not much else to do. So I feel like after you've beaten it once, I mean, yeah, I get the bonus ending, I guess, even though it's not much of a bonus ending. I don't want to say any spoiler, spoilers, but it wasn't very... It was pretty disappointing. So I really believe that this whole game just felt rushed. Like, they wanted to get it out by a certain deadline, and as a result, the game suffered. Um, I really hope that um, way forward does future games with this with Arc System Wars, you know, for the future of River City. Um, I hope next game they focus more on the gameplay is where it really needs work. The game, like I said, visually sound, I have no doubt in that, so that's fine. But the controls and the gameplay is where the game really needs to come together. Um... Other than that, like I said, some few quirks uh, that I had, uh, particularly with the zoning. Oh god, fucking, I wanted to shoot somebody. When you kept hitting X near the wall and you keep fucking zoning. Unbelievable how much that occurs. Like, little things like that need to be addressed in the game. Where it just, it gets annoying as shit. So... To, to be as fair as possible, I'm not trying to like say this game is the worst game ever played, but at the same time, this game does not deserve a nine and, and ten or eight or whatever people are saying. That is way too high for this game. Uh, this game would definitely be an eight or a nine if they addressed all the gameplay problems and put in more content. The game would have easily been an eight, eight point five, and I would have highly recommended it. But in the current state it's in, it's just. There's really nothing here to pull you back in after a first ride. Um, I have no interest in playing it again. Uh, it was fun. Uh, Two-player mode does kind of increase the playability a bit. But other than that, 
I feel that there are better beat em up games out there. Um, if you haven't played uh, uh, Fight and Rage, that's one product. One of the absolute best that you can play at this moment. Um, but definitely look at uh, Streets of Rage 4 as an upcoming one. I do highly recommend that. But overall, I give this game a 7. Um, I was contemplating a 6, but I think it's not that bad. But I think a 7 is fair. Like I said, it's not bad, it's not great, it's decent. And I think that's as fair as it's going to get with me. Um, I'm trying not to be biased here. So I just want to be as honest as possible while giving people good information to like ex to explain to people what this game is about. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this review video. Um, come back for more. Um, I do stream pretty often on YouTube and um, Twitter. Uh, sorry, Twitch. Uh, H Galleon is my username. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the future. Thank you.